Hello and welcome to a special edition of Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, our annual year in review. 2022 was full of highlights. We welcomed a new garrison commander, saw the activation of our first Space Force unit, and witnessed the opening of the Kuhn Hall Education and Resiliency Center. We start our look back with a January donation of images from the Baltimore Orioles historian. Stetka found the images in a box of items belonging to his great uncle, George Johnson, who was stationed at various posts, including Fort Meade in the 1930s and 40s. The pictures were very small, so they're grainy, but they're still a fascinating look at life at Fort Meade during another time. Fort Meade Garrison Command Sergeant Major Andre Welch leads service members, young Marines, and Baltimore County Police in an honor salute at Gilchrist Baltimore's fourth annual Vietnam Veterans Day celebration. We need everyone on the team, we need everyone on board committed to getting us to zero. Zero sexual assaults, zero sexual harassment in our ranks. Elsewhere, it was a sad day for many in the Fort Meade community as it bid farewell to the very last displays at the now closed Fort Meade Museum. Three tanks, a Liberty Mark 8, an FT-17 M1917, and an M3A1 were all located inside the museum. The FT-17's new home is the first cavalry museum at Fort Hood, Texas. The M3A1 was built between 1942 and 1943 and is part of the Stewart family of tanks. It's headed for the U.S. Army Armor and Cavalry Collection at Fort Benning, Georgia. The last tank, the Liberty Mark 8's new home, is also at Fort Benning. The mission of the case on Platoon today is to escort our fallen heroes into Arlington National Cemetery and to uh, do whatever types of ceremonies and, and different things that are required for us in, in the military district of Washington. In a recent newscast, we announced the delivery of seven resiliency services kiosks that were set up around the post. All seven kiosks are now online. They're part of a $3.6 million gift from the Fort Meade Alliance Foundation's renovation of Kuhn Hall into the Fort Meade Education and Resiliency Center. The military district of Washington, Sergeant Audie Murphy Award is presented to the following non-commissioned officer for exhibiting outstanding competence, superior performance, and dedication to duty throughout this vigorous process while setting the example for all to follow. Sergeant First Class Andrea Collins from the 782nd Military Intelligence Battalion is Fort Meade's newest member of the Sergeant Audie Murphy Association. Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland tossing out a ceremonial first pitch at the recent Baltimore Orioles Military Appreciation Day event. To come forward to cut a birthday cake. Scenes from Club Mead and this year's Army Heritage Observance, the cutting of the traditional Army birthday cake. To the Fort Meade Medac team, it has been my good fortune and an absolute honor to serve alongside such a dedicated and caring team of professionals. You have served at one of the most unsettling times in our nation's history and excelled at taking care of people at a time when it mattered most. I am honored and humbled by the opportunity to lead this incredible team and join our mission and community partners from across Joint Task Force, National Capital Region, and the U.S. Army Military District of Washington. Closing the ceremony, new Garrison Commander Colonel Sapp thanked his predecessor. Chris, I know the time and attention that you've shown me for nearly a month of transition is just a small sample of the energy, focus, and, dare I say, love that you have poured out to your team, to the mission partners, and to the members of the community remembering the community doesn't end at the fence line. On the 29th of June, we activated the 53rd Space Operations Squadron. And over the next two months, we will activate the remaining two wideband SATCOM operations centers. We're also transferring 271 soldiers from the 53rd Signal Battalion to the Space Force. Lieutenant Colonel Rogers presided over the ceremony, turning the reins of command over to Captain Stephen Gershey. The new Scripps Center is located in the Exchange Mall, just outside the pharmacy. The Scripps Center, like the first one located at Kimbrough, is a pickup service for refill prescriptions only. Scenes from this year's Capital Shield exercise, the annual exercise brings together local, state, and federal disaster response teams. I think it's a super effective for preparation to, before they go to the range. For soldiers, the EST is helping prepare for a new marksmanship standard. The transformation of Kuhn Hall into Fort Meade's new Education and Resiliency Center has been in progress for more than 10 years. But this week, garrison leadership, members of the Fort Meade Alliance, county, state, and federal officials cut the ribbon on the newly renovated center. Four, three, two, one, light the trees! 